What's up guys, this is Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys PF Sense. So as I stated in plenty of my previous videos, there are a lot of Linux distributions out there that are created for different purposes. And one of them I want to talk about today is PF Sense. This one is actually created for protecting your network uh, as a firewall slash router. And this is a very awesome distribution. It is an inter enterprise level firewall. Uh, so you can put it up there with Cisco firewalls, the like PIX firewalls or uh, all those different firewalls that are out there. This is on that level and you can actually take an older computer and set up PFSense on it to protect your whole network, which is totally cool. So I wanted to kind of go through and show you guys how to set this up and use it to protect your network. So the first thing I want to do is actually go to their website and read a little bit about it so you guys can get a full understanding of how to actually use PFSense. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm at the website for PFSense. Uh, it's pfsense.org. I always put the links down in the description below, so check that out if you want to go to PFSense's website. But let's go down and read a little bit about it. It says, open source security. Uh, secure network starts here with thousands of enterprise enterprises using PFSense software. It is rapidly becoming the world's most trusted open source network security solution. And then it says, get started. So you can get into that. And um, also one thing about PFSense, they also produce products. They have firewalls, physical firewalls that they actually sell with PFSense installed. And one of the things about PFSense as well, it makes a lot of its money off of support similar to Red Hat. So they offer companies support. But if you're a small business, this is just a great solution to set up to actually protect your network at your business you know what i'm saying by using uh pfsense box and then you can pay for support if you need it but uh it's not that difficult to set up and get going that's why i wanted to put it on my channel uh because you guys know i talk about all linux distributions and they have their own distribution that you guys can you know install on pretty much anything it's it's made to work on even older computers so you can repurpose an old computer and set this up as a firewall for your enterprise network because it's the software that actually does all the magic and the hardware is only needed based on the amount of nodes that are on your network. Okay, and let me click uh, get started right fast just to read a little bit more. It says PFSense software includes the same features as most expensive commercial firewall solutions. In some cases, PFSense includes additional features that are not available in commercial closed source solutions. In all cases, PFSense provides better value for your money. Let us show you what PFSense can do and get started on the path to deploying PFSense software in your environment. And just to give you an example of some of the firewall hardware that is out there, commercially used firewall hardware that this is equivalent to, uh, but down here it says uh, Checkpoint, Cisco PIX, uh, Cisco ASA, uh, Juniper, SonicWall, Netgear, you know, this thing is equivalent or this software is equivalent to, you know, protecting your network on the same level, you know, for commercial firewalls or it's related to commercial firewalls and one thing about it and i'll show you guys this later it also has a web interface um, that allows you to manage everything from there and i'll show you guys that a little later but the next thing i wanted to show you guys is actually downloading the software so you just click the download button it's free bsd based so that's one cool thing about it you know what i'm saying it's linux open source so i really like that and then if we click here this this shows you how to actually download the image you can it's more it's a few different ways you can download it you can go to the architecture you know i'll select amd64 i already have it downloaded but this is the current version 2.4.5-p1 and then you can get the different installers they have a usb memory stick installer so if you have some physical box you want to install it on you can write that to the or put it on your usb stick and 
install it from there and then also they have a C CD image installer so that's typically what I go with because I typically use virtual box to install it but anyway you just hit download you can select the closest mirror to you uh, and just download it and it's not that big software they have it uh, compressed when you download it uh, it's gun zipped or G zipped so it just unzip it and then write the ISO to either a USB or write it to you know a CD drive if you still have one of those around <laughs> but anyway um, next thing I want to show you guys is actually the documentation so if we go in here they have a whole bunch of documentation uh, like I clicked on installing and upgrading uh, this is the install process so it kind of breaks it all out for you I'm gonna show you guys all this uh, live so you guys can see how to actually do it uh, versus just reading but they have everything about the actual firewall software you know everything you can do backup recovery interface types and configuration user management and authentication uh, certificate management firewall uh, network address translation or NATS uh, routing bridging VLANs multiple WAN connections virtual private networks it's just a whole slew of networking applications included in this actual distribution so let's go on and download it well I already have it downloaded but let's go on and get to the virtual machine so you guys can see how to actually install it let's get started on that okay cool so I'm bringing up the virtual machine right now uh, I basically gave it four gigabytes of memory as well as two processors and I also set up the network adapter as bridge so it'll pull its own IP address because I want to show you guys the web application that you can access from PS PF since so let's go down and start this thing up and boot it up and walk you through the process um, okay cool so as you can see it'll boot right into the installer and the first thing it'll pop up is basically saying that PFSense is you know copyrighted by Rubicon Communications LLC which is Netgear uh, PFSense is federally registered trademark of an electron electric uh, sheet fencing LLC but anyway it's just a copyright inf information you just press uh, enter to accept and the first really real page of the installer is what you actually want to do because the installer you know includes like certain things that you can actually do to fix a system that's already there or you can just do a fresh install or a clean install of PFSense so the first option is states uh, PFSense install uh, and the next thing is rescue shell this will launch a shell uh, for rescue operations so if you already have something installed um, a version of PFSense install that's not working properly then you can hop into the rescue shell and that'll help you fix that and then the next thing is a recovery config.xml so you can use that config.xml from a previous install to recover uh, PFSense install so let's go ahead and hit the first one because this is a clean install uh, and that'll take us to the next step and this is a very short install just to show you guys uh, this is one of the next things uh, the key map uh, the default is actually US but if you're in a different country you know you want to obviously go down and pick the proper key map for your country uh, but I'll, I'll hit enter because I'm in US uh, and it says this is how you want to partition a drive so how would you want to partition the drives well they have uh, four different options here uh, UFS which is it'll set it up audit uh, automatically uh, and then there's a manual you can do the manual disk setup and it says expert next to it so if you really understand how to set up you know this uh, then you can go that route and then the shell and then you can actually partition it by hand if you want to um, now the last option is actually ZFS so you can actually use ZFS uh, for these systems which is a different file system uh, other than UFS but I'll just go on and use UFS so let's press enter there and that'll go on and create those partitions and it'll basically go through the install at this point it won't take long and like I've stated in the, I think I stated in the earl, earlier that when you download it's like 300 uh, megabytes, but when you uncompress it's like 700 megabytes. I remember back in the day when PFSense was like 400 megabytes when you first download it, and it's and it's grown over time. But 
it's still a very small ISO. But that's pretty much it. The installation is super short. Uh, and we can read right here it says the installation is now finished before exiting the installer Would you like to open a shell in a new sys in the new system and make any final manual modifications? And I'm gonna just hit no uh, Because I want to reboot it um, And remove the actual ISO from the virtual machine. So let's hit reboot uh, And I'm gonna shut it down and then remove that ISO. So I'll be back in one second with the system booting up Okay, cool. So we booting up the system and this is after the install and it'll go up and bring it'll just, you know, move forward and just boot up the system. Uh, you don't even have to, you know, see it or have a screen connected to it or anything. Uh, you could just let it boot up and it'll boot up the system, it's especially once you have it configured. Uh, you can run this thing headless is what I'm trying to get to. Now, the first thing that'll pop up, it is basically a default configuration. It wants you to set up the configuration for the system. Uh, now, now the first question it asks you is, should VLANs be set up now? Now, if you understand what VLANs are or virtual LANs, uh, you can, you know, obviously set this up if you want to. Uh, I'm gonna choose no um, at this point, so we don't need it. And then also, uh, it asks you to set up the WAN interface name. So you can name it whatever you want to. I'm gonna just use the default name that they recommend, EM0, uh, and just press enter. And that'll set up the WAN interface. Now it will ask you about the LAN interface, which is your internal you know, interface name. So let's just press enter there. Uh, I'm gonna just ignore it and just uh, use the same interface name and says, do you wanna proceed? Uh, type Y, enter. And that'll actually bring up that interface, that, those interfaces for you. Uh, and this will allow you to actually log in to the web interface, uh, which we'll, we'll go to in a second once this comes up. But I want to at least show you guys some of the options that you can run directly from the PFSense box uh, because a lot of the configuration can be done from the server itself. You don't have to go to the webs to the web interface, but you can do a lot here as well. And I'll show you guys that. But now it's finished uh, setting up the actual system for you. Um, all the configuration is done pretty much. Uh, but there are some options here you can go through. And like I said, you can do things on the system, you know, directly on the system. So uh, zero log out, you know, that's for SSH only. Uh, it says assign interfaces, that's one. But all you have to do is type in the number of whichever one you want to do. So if you wanted to go into assign interfaces, you can press one uh, and that'll take you into that portion of the configuration. Uh, you can set up interfaces you know, with IP addresses, reset the web configurator password, uh, reset to factory defaults. All that can be done here. You can reboot the system, halt system, ping host, shell. Uh, they have a PF top, which is basically a uh, top or PF sense version of top, which is, you know, it just monitors the system. Uh, you can filter logs, restore the web configurator, uh, PHP shell, PF sense tools uh update from console enable secure shell so you can enable ssh so you can connect to the server via ssh uh restore recent configuration and restore php fpm now that i showed you guys that let's go down and go to the web interface where you can see things a whole lot better so i'm gonna leave this system up and running the ip address what you want to do is find out what the ip address is especially if you're you know, as long as you're on, on the same internal network of the system, you can get to that IP address unless you open up ports, unless you have to open up ports, which uh, I wouldn't recommend you opening this up to the web, but let's go to the IP address right fast though. One second, boom. So, okay, so the IP address is uh, 192.168.10.112. And all you gotta do is press enter. And right now it's gonna show uh, as the connection is not private because you don't have a cert installed on your server. Now one thing you may wanna do in the future is install a cert. It's best to install a cert. But let's go down and uh, proceed to it. And this is the first thing that'll pop up and you can type in the, the default uh, user account is admin. 
and the password for that new install is actually PF sense so you want to type that in and that'll actually log you into the system and the first thing that'll pop up is actually another wizard or it's a wizard that's built into the system uh, and it'll walk you through some of the same configurations that we've seen but you can make changes if you want to at this time so i'm gonna just hit next there this is about the support so they do have 24 7 support but this is the host name for the server so pfsense uh you can set set a domain name and i'm not gonna go through all this stuff but you can you know configure your dns uh override dns is default so i'm gonna just leave it the way it is uh, press next and then here is the time server uh, which you, you can set up yourself. You can change the time zone if you want to, but I'm gonna roll with it like this. Uh, so let's hit next. Now you can select the WAN interface. So this is set to DHCP right now. So that's how it's able to pull an a IP address from my network. Um, it's not static. So, and then the subnet mass, you know, and it's, it's a whole bunch of information in here or things that you could change, you know, during this wizard. And the last step or one of the last steps is actually changing the admin password so let's go down and change that right fast uh to something a little bit more secure and press next it should be good and then it's going to reload the configuration and it's fine uh for some reason it's missing or it has an expired token which was kind of weird i never seen it do that before it might be because i reinstalled this thing uh, multiple times but anyway once it uh, reloads the config, it should take you to the main uh, page for the system. And this is pretty much the dashboard for PFSense. Uh, it'll bring that up, you know, once you finish um, the main config. Now you can go through, uh, it gives you basic system information. You know, it'll tell you the BIOS, it'll take the system, you know, user that's logged in, uh, the current version. Uh, and it's, it lets you know if the system is up to date or not and also just some more information about the system itself uh, you can check everything from the dashboard now there are a whole bunch of options that you can go through and I won't go through them all I just wanted to show you guys how to actually set it up but this is the main uh, interface that you can or web interface that you can go through and make all the settings change that you want you can you know modify the firewall from here you know this is the interface uh services they have a whole bunch of services you can set up dhcp relays uh dhcp servers you know dns uh forwarders res resolvers uh dynamic dns load balancing uh everything that you can do on an enterprise uh firewall slash router uh so Go through this thing, check it out for yourself. Uh, they have plenty of documentation that'll show you how to edit this thing until your heart desires, you know what I'm saying? So you can get your system up and going. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll continue doing videos on different Linux distributions as well as di different applications that you use on the Linux operating system. And the whole goal is to try to help people and get people more interested in using the Linux operating system because it's a very powerful system. And this will also help you get into the IT field. But if you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techy.